Hey guys, we're in beautiful Palo Alto, California. Just finished up with a specialized media event. They were showing off their new Vado electric bike. So these replaced the old turbo models. There was a Model X that had a suspension. There was a Model S that was high speed. And they all used the Go Swiss uh, gearless direct drive rear hub motor, very quiet. It offered regenerative braking but it did throw off the balance of the bike a little bit and it had some cogging. So they've moved from that to Broza. That's a mid-drive system rated at 250 watts nominal up to 530 watts peak, 90 newton meters of torque. It's the same mid-drive motor system that they use on the Levo, which is their full suspension mountain bike. And they really stress that these are custom tuned. This is dialed in for sort of sporty urban performance. And this is the 6.0 model, which is a higher speed up to 28 miles per hour, class three. And in Europe, for the speed pedal X, they have to have a few extras for safety. And in fact, they require you to have some licensing. Uh, so there's a little license plate holder right here. There's a rear brake with an integrated light that activates when you pull either one of those brake levers. So it's always on, it's fairly visible red, but when you pull those, it, it goes bright. The brake levers here have a little ball at the end, so that's another safety feature. In fact, these Tektro brakes are really nice. They have finger adjustable reach, so you can dial that in if you have smaller, like petite hands. They also have an integrated light, 600 lumens, very, very bright. Specialized worked with like a motorcycle light manufacturer to get this, and it's, um, you can see semi-spherical here casts a nice even sh glow. I, I, it's not nighttime, but I tried to get into a shadier area so that you could see the display once we get into that. The display is also removable. Another cool feature that not every electric bike has. First of all, some e-bikes like the Specialized Turbo Levo, it, they skip the display. It's built into the side of the down tube and they rely on an app. Whereas this has a display built right in. I think it's very handy. It's nice to be able to take it off and at the base, there's a micro USB port putting out five volts, I'd say at least 700 milliamps because it does charge an iPhone. So that's nice. And then you just set it here and twist it. And actually let's, there we go, twisting that direction. Not too large. This is the TFT display. So it's actually touchscreen in addition to the button pads on the right here. Body geometry, ergonomic grips. Love that Specialized was able to squeeze in bottle cage bosses. It does not come with this Z cage or the little tool here. This is their SWAT tool. It's pretty cool though. If you go to a specialized dealer, you can get one of these combo setups and you can have some tools along with you so you can adjust the seat height because that is not quick release right there. Um, did have to adjust that earlier. I like my seat really high so I can get full leg extension. Same thing with the, the wheel set here. We've got a hundred millimeter length, 15 millimeter through axle, really stiff, solid, sturdy. You want that when you're riding faster and when you have heavier, slightly larger tires, considering this is more of a road, like kind of an urban bike. This is the Electrac 2.0 with Armadillo anti-puncture technology and Griptron or Gripton <laughs> compound. So they're really grippy. They do feel great. I've been riding at pretty fast speeds today, probably 30 miles per hour plus going down some, some hills and it's just nice to have that big surface area. It's sort of smooth, but you've got a little bit of tread there. They've done a lot of research and work in their wind tunnel to get these fenders right, so they don't, they don't rattle a whole lot. You might see there's some reflective stickers on the side. Um, and then they extend really far, and at the end, I think this is like flex, flexible, rubber, multi-plastic, um, extra long fender that you don't see that all the time. And sometimes when you're pedaling, you don't want to clip that with your feet. But if you do, or if you go off a curb, this is going to bend without causing you much problem. So I, I really appreciate that. And then under, underneath the top, there's actually kind of an angled plastic. Hopefully you can see in there and it's designed to route water out the sides versus up. Cause when you're going really fast, water collects at the back of the fender and then the wheel and the air pressure forces it forwards and sometimes it goes up into your face and that's not what you want when you're going super fast. I love the, you know, Specialized is a cool brand. So you've got some silver accents here, yellow in this case, I'm on a medium sized frame. And from this angle, you can see there are also bosses on the lower portion of the top tube. So you could add a folding lock right there, potentially even another bottle cage. The, the women specific step through frame also has two tubing section, so it's fairly stiff, but they didn't have enough space for two of them. So that one only has a lower bottle cage, but for people who are petite, maybe their leg length isn't quite so long, 
being able to stand over the bike is more important than having those extra bosses. And it still has the rack if you get the 6.0. The 2.0 is the one, it's sort of the entry level, a little bit more affordable. It doesn't have any of those accessories. So, you know, looking at the lights, the fenders, the rack, this is top of the line, including the suspension fork, which is really nice to have at 28 miles per hour when you're really hitting those top speeds. And just again, along with these tires here, I was gonna try to get the, the size for you. 700 by 51 C so a little bit wider and then the rims if you look at these these are double walled aluminum they've also got some reflective decals on them and then these eyelets the reinforcement eyelets so it's spreading out some of that weight 14 gauge spokes adjustable nipples just nicer stuff all around 180 millimeter these are the Tektro TRP Zurich hydraulic disc brakes 180 front and rear you need that stopping power when you're going a little bit faster and i started up here with the through axle size and just talking about this is a through axle it's not just a, a, a narrow skewer which are usually nine millimeters this is 15 millimeters so a little bit fatter sturdier and then in the rear 12 millimeters i believe this is 142 length so pretty standard it's not using boost technology which is slightly wider hubs or axles to accommodate those really fat tires. You don't need that here. So the, the bike is using kind of the standard measurements, I guess, the standard kit as you were. And then this kickstand, I love that it has a kickstand, very minimal, beautiful design. I believe this tip is adjustable so you can go a little bit longer if that wears down over time or if you're someone who wants to park your bike a little bit higher up or on a hill or something. But they didn't mount it on the outside of this chain stay. They mounted it on the inside. So it's really sleek and beautiful from the side, kind of aerodynamic coming back to the, the wind tunnel. And you know, some of it's, it's sort of like the marketing thing, but Specialized is one of the big three uh, e bicycle manufacturers in the United States. They have resources. They were able to make this in four different sizes, several different colors, four different SKUs. So there's the 2.0, 3.0, 5.0 and then the king of the hill here 6.0 $4,800 MSRP you are paying a little bit more but you're getting a premium drive system and a 604 watt hour battery pack with high density cells so you know that's that's something that's really it's easy to sort of overlook well you know range how far am I going to go there are a lot of factors in there but generally if you can get a higher energy density cell they don't add that much weight and then you end up with a lot more range and cycling through the battery takes longer which means it might last longer they've got a really custom bms that's designed to not overcharge or let the battery dip too far down it's removable and instead of coming up like this or standing out on the frame like some of the you know bosch and some of the older yamaha it's fine you know you've got a battery right there but you usually don't have room for this cup holder here and from the side, it's more obviously an e-bike, whereas this blends in, it's sleek. You know, there is this noticeable bulge here, the triangle shape, but they've done that to fit around the motor. So that's the Broza motor. Peak output, 90 Newton meters, just incredible. That's what makes this possible for use on the Levo as well. And then you can see this plastic, I would call it, like a skid guard kind of thing. It's protecting the motor, but there it's vented. So air can flow in from the front and then it's pushed out underneath. So that's active cooling. And there's even a horn built in there. So later I'll, I'll honk it, but you get a little bit more of a noticeable like chirp than just a bell. And it keeps that cockpit clean. Here's the horn button, by the way. So 48 teeth on the front chain ring. It's a little bit more. I believe the other uh, lower speed models have 42 teeth so that those extra six teeth are gonna make it possible to pedal at that higher speed without feeling like you're beating eggs with your legs, so to speak. These are their fitness pedals. They seem to be like a plastic, almost like a skateboard grip tape on top with reflectors. Pretty standard, standard looking crank arms. Looks like 170 millimeters there. It says Praxis works. So, high, you know, higher end plastic chain cover, chain ring cover. So if you have pants on, it should help to slough those pants over the chain and maybe not get so greasy. And then the chain shouldn't bounce outward. There isn't a guide on the inside, but it's pretty close to the side of the bottom bracket down tube area. So I haven't had any problem with the chain coming off and it's been shifting great. But of course this is set up custom for me, ha, ah, right? Like we're out there, it's a media event. They want it to be perfect. And it, it really has been. This is 11 sprockets in the rear, 11 to 42 teeth, really high-end drivetrain, Shimano Dior XT Shadow Plus. And the Shadow Plus designates this one-way clutch. So if you click it up like I just did, 
it tightens that. It's not gonna bounce around as much. And I was told if you're taking the wheel off, you can lock that and this isn't gonna be springing back and forth. It's gonna make it easier to perform maintenance in the rear end. So that's cool. And otherwise you can unlock it and it might bounce around a little bit more, but shifting might be just a little bit easier if you're not going at those high speeds, it's not as bumpy. They do have a really thin, clear slap guard here, but I haven't actually seen any chips. So the chain hasn't been bouncing and, and you know banging on that, which is sort of nice. Again, 11 speeds is cool. One by drivetrain means you only need one derailleur, really high end derailleur. It declutters the bottom bracket and it means there's fewer shifter levers up here, fewer cables. A lot of mountain bikes are going to this one by setup. And when you have the support of an electric drive system, maybe you don't need so many gears because the motor's there. You know, if you need to climb, you can shift down to a relatively low gear and it works just fine. So again, my experience today has been really great. No problem climbing. This is very similar to a lot of other electric bikes drive systems, the one by 11. So we're back here on the rear fender. These are aluminum alloy until you get down to that, that rubber plastic piece there, Flextron or whatever. And this is what I was talking about. If you're pedaling forward, there is that moment of potential heel strike, but normally my foot would be here, not way up here. So I feel like there's enough clearance that keeps your feet and your shins much cleaner if you're actually commuting with this. This is standard gauge tubing on the rack time compatible rack. So it means you can clip on a lot of panniers or the rack time accessories that are compatible with these little slides here, these holes. And they've got another blocker on the side so you can clip your pannier and it won't bounce and it won't wave around as you turn corners. 30.9 millimeter seat post diameter. That's really nice because, you know, this is still a little bit more of a rigid ride, especially at high speed. The tires really help, they're fatter. The suspension fork is great, but if you got like the 5.0 model, it doesn't have suspension. You could always replace this seat post with a seat post suspension. Body Float has one, Thudbuster has one, even Suntour has like the NCX seat post suspension. So you could either get 30.9 or get a shim adapter, and then that's gonna add another layer of comfort. So you could pair those together and you really be feeling cush, which is great. Body geometry grips, nice canopy saddle here with body geometry from Specialized. That's just their term for like, we care about your body, we made it feel good. But it does feel good. And those are, other, those are the two touch points other than the frame being slightly different. Uh, for the women's model versus the men's high step. And of course, you know, women can get this too if you wanted. It might be slightly stiffer, but they both felt good and vice versa. They have an all black version of the step through. So if you're a guy who's maybe not as tall or you just, you know, it's, let's say you have gear on this rack and you're trying to swing your leg over and you're hitting your shin and, you know, or you're trying to lift it way up like this. Sometimes it's nice to have the, the low step or what I would call the mixty kind of a mid step frame. Um, there's no shame in getting that. So it's cool that they offer it. Back to the fork for a second, 50 millimeters of travel. We've got this clicker here. I believe this is a compression clicker. It does go all the way to lockout, but you'll hear there's steps. It's not just one way or the other. We do have preload adjust on that side. Apparently this is custom tuned for this bike and then rebound adjust at the bottom. So it's not bad. This is like a coil shock. It's not an air shock, but they respond quicker and I don't think they need as much adjustment um, so, you know, not bad. There's another shot of that Zurich Tektro caliper, and it looks like quad piston on that. So you can see the two circles, so there's two on each side, so it spreads out and gives you some nice fluid braking power. Yeah, on both of those, very cool, very nice. Just gonna walk around this again. Coming back to the fender, um, aluminum alloy, and it's, it's sort of beveled, so it's a little bit stiffer. It doesn't bounce around a whole lot. It's not just one plate. It's actually on the underside, uh, adds some strength. Really nice to see that. And then the mirror, I guess I failed to mention this earlier, but this is set up. So if you're riding in traffic, I think it's another European requirement. The stem a little bit shorter and it comes with two 10 millimeter stacks and one five. So you could move those above the stem if you wanted. And, and that would bring the whole handlebar down a little bit. You could even flip this stem instead of being up and that would make it more aggressive. The way it's set up right now is a little more upright. You're gonna be able to spot traffic, talk to your friends, feel a little bit more relaxed, but you're not gonna be as aerodynamic. And honestly, it's tough to get over the 28 mile per hour mark on this. You kind of get up to it and then the motor eases off for legal reasons. Um, and it's just the weight of the bike, 55.4 pounds on this one, in particular, the medium. 
combined with air resistance of being upright, you know, if you tuck, that's when you start going a little faster or if it's a really big hill. Trigger shifters, I like that the, the little trigger can go forward or back. It's not just one way. Two finger levers. We already mentioned the adjustable reach, adjustable angle on that display mount, removable display. Just, you know, good stuff all around. Very clean cockpit. They try to keep that clean. And this is an inch and an eighth straight. So it's not a tapered head tube. You can see the internally routed cables, locking core by Avis on this side, magnetic energy bus charging standard, Rosenberger standard. So you plug it in. If you trip over the cable, it just pops right out. It's not gonna pull the bike over and the pins aren't gonna get bent as easily or if at all. They're, they're kind of like flexible. They push in and out. And then this cover, you know, I've seen this on a lot of bikes where you can see the magnets they have just a cover but it's not connected to a leash like see how this one doesn't drop away it's real easy to lose those and that's what happens a lot at like demo events and stuff you'll see a bike and it's missing the cover and you know dirt and water get in there these are still i believe ip65 rated so you know really high rating against water and dust and stuff but it's just nice that you don't have to worry about losing it and that battery pack comes out at a 45 degree angle versus top like we were saying before so it's just it's really well thought out considering how nicely integrated it is too and color matched to the rest of the, fi the frame uh, engineered in Switzerland. So I was able to speak with Dominic from Specialized. He's here, he's from Switzerland. He's like on the product team. So he gave me some more insights and walked me through the PowerPoint deck. I might link to that for you if you wanna hear it from his words and get the whole marketing perspective. But I'm genuinely impressed. I like that they have multiple levels of this bike. I feel like it's very well balanced. I weighed it from right about here and the bike didn't tip a whole lot. The weight is low and centrally balanced. That's critical. And it's just, you know, it's pretty. These bikes are, they're really classy looking. I might cut to some shots of the, the step through version. So this is the step through version of the Vado 6.0. Love that they squeeze the bottle cage on there, but you can see it's still really you know, double. There's a top tube, there's a down tube reinforced. It's not gonna be as flexy as a lot of the other step through like ladies style electric bikes even with gear on the rack and it's got the same great fenders full length here one thing it doesn't have are the the bosses on the underside of the top tube which could be used for a folding lock but you still got the suspension love this beautiful black color but they have other colors that might be a bit more visible same adjustable reach levers yeah these tektra levers are pretty cool because they have the motor well not a motor inhibitor in this case it's just like a brake line uh, to illuminate that rear that rear light same kickstand very similar just a much lower standover height which as you can imagine is is critical if you're someone who's a bit more petite okay kick the kickstand up here press the power button for a couple seconds and you do have an LED indicator down there so I've got three out of five dots it says built by blocks turbo and this is the TFT touchscreen display so as long as you're not moving too fast, you can interact with this a little bit more. There's a set button over here that cycles through. So we've got you know our speed and kilometers, kilocalories, RPM, and it zooms in on these. So kilometers per hour and then back out. Uh, plus and minus go through our different assist levels. We're in turbo right now, which is the highest, down to sport, down to eco or off completely. You can ride it like a normal bike with the lights still working for safety. Remember I said they come on like right away. Uh, so they're always on for safety. You can't disable those unless you're on the lower speed bikes. And then they have a light button. They also have a bell versus this one has that horn. Awesome. <laughs> and now we're back here up at the display again. Uh, there is a walk mode. If you hold the plus button for a couple seconds here, it uh, kicks in. There we go. Considering this is 55.4 pounds, it's nice to have that if you're loaded up with groceries, maybe you're walking with a friend down the street and you don't wanna, you, you know, it's, it's a little bit heavier. The real challenge is gonna be if you live upstairs in a condo or something and getting this inside. So it's great that you can take the battery pack off. I believe it's like 6.4 pounds. I'll have all the specs back at the website, standover height, reach, the weight of the battery, that kind of stuff. I'm gonna use walk mode to help us get up these stairs. Okay, so coming back to the display, we've got a couple different buttons here. There's this triangle and it kind of acts like that set button. You've got the circle, I guess it just takes it home. And then the square, 
We've got touch controls, battery, units. So I might change this to Imperial. Back, language, it's in English, time and date, and inspection. So, you know, this is a smart system. They can do diagnostics on it and get some feedback. Odometer, 22 miles. So that's the total usage. I'm the first one to ever use this bike, so that's how far I rode earlier today. I think that's about it. This can also sync with the Mission Control app. So that's a smartphone app you can download and you can tell it like, hey, I wanna arrive at my destination with 10% battery left, but on the way there, I want all the help I can get. It can do that. And you can also dial in some of the drive modes and characteristics, and you can have a map and then sync it with this. So even if you're not looking at your phone, if it's not mounted up here to the cockpit, it's still gonna be able to sync and send mapping information to this small display. And you know, if you look at that, that's a pretty big readout. It's big enough to see even when you're far back here, but they wanted to keep it small and minimal so it didn't stand out and scream electric. That micro USB is such a cool little extra too. I just, I feel like they've, they've really thought this through. So I'm gonna hop back on, let's see. I'll take it all the way up to turbo. I would call the motor quiet. The Broza system has a belt drive, like a carbon belt drive between the gears. And that's nice because, you know, it takes off some of the vibration and it also keeps it quiet. It's smooth. Um, yeah, I guess that's what sets it apart. It's, it's smooth, it's pretty compact. It measures the rear wheel speed, but instead of using a magnet and a sensor on the, the chainstay, it's right back there on the disc rotor. See that right there? See it moving? So it's maybe not gonna get kicked, um, feel a little bit more solid. That's nice. It's measuring your pedal cadence and your pedal uh, torque. So this is something of a torque sensor. And, and that's nice because if you're really pushing hard, you need to climb, you want support. You're telling the motor like, I'm struggling. And it's just, it responds really fluidly. I would, I would say it's quiet for most applications, but if you're spinning at higher RPM and climbing, you do hear it. Uh, and there's no shift sensing. So when you shift gears, that torque sensor is really important. You wanna ease off a little bit on how hard you're pushing and then shift gears. And if you're going fast and you know you're gonna stop, shift down in advance so that you don't have to like lumber forward and like kunk, 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 shifting gears. That happened a little bit today on our demo ride. And um, you know, it's just, it's gonna wear out your, your chain and your chain rings and your derailleur a little bit faster. So that's some riding advice. It's that gear mashing I'm talking about. Try to carry some of your speed and shift, shift a little early. You know, before you're like completely stopped, shift down in preparation to start again. I'm gonna go ahead and hop on this thing. I'm in turbo, it's just, it takes right off. So you could hear it at first and now not at all because I'm not pushing, the torque isn't there. Now I'm gonna shift through some gears. Okay. Doing really well, 23 miles per hour, 23, 24 a second ago. Felt really smooth, felt solid, it's not noisy. And now I'm in that high gear, so I gotta start out slower. Pretty responsive as well, because it's measuring all those different signals we were talking about a second ago. It's not just one. Get a nice view of that display. I think TFT, it's reflective and backlit, so it does look very nice even though this is a very bright day and you're getting full sunlight. Just a little mirror on the side. Those good brakes, always important if someone backs out in front of you. From here, you should be able to see the chain changing through some gears. I'm not gonna mash them. I'm gonna be careful as I shift. Should be fairly quiet. You can hear any rattling that goes on and just see how quickly that chain ring responds. To me, it's it's fairly quick. There's a, there's a slight delay. I also wanna point out that the teeth on that chain ring are narrow wide. So they alternate in thickness and that matches up with the thickness in between these chain links. So 
it's really cool. It grips the chain a little bit better. It's less likely for it to uh, rattle side to side and then maybe bounce off. It's a nice upgrade. From this angle, you should be able to see the suspension actuating. It's 50 millimeters of travel. Not a ton, but definitely enough to make a, a big difference, especially at speed. And then down here, there's that fender. I could see it rattling a little bit just because it's softer with that multi-plastic rubberized flap at the end, uh, but it wasn't making a lot of noise. try to minimize that chain bounce by uh, locking in the shadow plus one-way clutch shifting through some gears See the fender flapping around a little bit in the wind it's really not making a whole lot of noise and unfortunately i don't have any water here to show you on that but i think this has been pretty good i hope you found this interesting and informative i've tried to go deep because i know this is a bike a lot of people are excited about for the full write-up i'll see you back at electricbikereview.com <laughs> they got the horns Woo! <laughs> okay, time for a climb. We're about to start a climb. I'm in a pretty low gear, so I shouldn't have to mash, but you should be able to hear that motor. I'm in turbo mode, so you're getting the most power. Twenty-five kilometers per hour is about fifteen point five. That's just real easy. So just expect every time you come around to a turn, expect that somebody is going to be in your lane. Okay. So just please take it easy on some of these turns. And like James said, it opens up and then we can. I feel like a little duck, you know, we're all yellow and we're like car. <laughs> we're in the highest gear. Okay, now we're above that 45. Brakes are holding up great.
Oh yeah. It's got a tree fort. Living in a tree fort, right? Yeah. How's it going, man? Not too bad. Pretty fun. I, know. I don't remember coming up this far. It just keeps going. It's great. Crazy. Seventy-three kilometers. the highest gear. Pretty comfortable pit cadence, despite being 50. But now we got no motor assist, so pretty quickly it drops back down to 45. So that's where the motor kicks in and that's where your wind resistance. I'm working hard. I'm not catching up to those guys, you know? It's a testament to the drive system keeps everyone going pretty fast. Doing great. Double black diamond. Yeah. <laughs> well said. What size bike are you on right now, Meg? Mm, I have no idea. That's no. a great question. It's a small. Does it feel pretty comfortable? Like I know stand over height, you're a little more petite and it's a nice way of saying short. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do my best. I too am a journalist. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it looks I mean, good. Most bikes are quite tall so I would go, go riding sometimes with my girlfriend and she'll like hop off and then it's like ah you know it's it's like right there the tube some of the bikes don't have that deep yeah. cut yeah this is definitely nice yeah. or else I would have to be off the bike the whole time. Yeah. or stand over I feel like these bikes are like ducks because the guys are like the really flashy yellow like hey hey and yeah. the, the girls it's are like true. don't eat like, me I'm right. yeah you guys are all hidden blending in is a beautiful it's like a burgundy wine color mm. with a really light teal pretty hit along the bottom of here and bottom of here and it's like yeah. i think that's where it is but it's really that's the one i think i might be getting myself a <laughs> present nice. hey guys um, so there are lots of color options it just kind of the color is kind of dependent on which model you want Maybe it won't let you do the display while you're riding. Huh. Preparation for the next start.
Oh boy. Glad we're on a bike, right? So James, yeah. I know my way around Palo Alto really well. I was trying to get a, like a complete cut. Yeah. I, I know you want to stick together and safety and all that, but do you think it'd be all right if I just cut through just to grab that footage? Yeah, if you wanted to go for a cruise, that's totally cool. <sighs> Let's lock it out. Oh, it's actually like, it's a pretty solid lockout. This is Palm Drive, Stanford University. Apparently, each one of these palm trees here, they're like emperor palms. And they, they cost like $50,000 or something. So the kids like to say, that's my palm tree. That's where my tuition went. 50K plus maintenance. Beautiful, the church up there, it's got gold leaf. Like a fresco. This university is just incredible. I've been reading East of Eden by John Steinbeck. Mentioned Stanford, among other, you know, Salinas, Bay Area destinations. Down to 51%. A little bit of a headwind you know I'm up to 36 so one of the points I wanted to make is that it's not like always at 28 miles per hour those are sort of in the ideal conditions when you're really working it the tower Leland Stanford was named after Leland Stanford's uh, a young man who died his parents were like railroad barons and wanted to make a like worthy Ivy League class university for the West Coast versus just Harvard and Yale and Oxford hey guys Is there a scenic route through campus that's bikeable? It's all bikeable. Yeah, it's all scenic. I think they just cool. you going through the main quad. Okay. Perimeters. Kind of that way. Signs. Okay. There's yeah. There's areas that they don't want you skateboarding and riding bikes. I'll keep an eye out. Yeah. Thank you so much. It's pretty busy. Have fun. Appreciate it. Maybe I'll, I'll walk this way and then cut over. Yeah, this fresco up here is super cool. And those statues, pretty creepy. There's, um, there's like an art museum over that way that has some really cool stuff like Dante's wall or something. It's incredible. Yeah, look at these statues at night. I've been hung out here before talking with friends and it's just, it's like they're kind of going mad or something. Go that way. Beautiful. Nineteen twenty eight. Look at that Saunders electric bike. <laughs> Another, two more Saunders. Saunders Thin and the Saunders Fat, wow. I mean, that's a super cheap bike. It's kind of the disposable version. If you're a student, you're worried about it getting stolen or beat up. Whew. 
little roundabout for cyclists. Apparently those create a lot fewer crashes and less damage than stop signs and stoplights. Of course they're more efficient too. This is so cool. I think that's the bookstore right over there. Go in and get a snack. Oh, here we go, this fountain. Yeah, people play in this fountain frequently. So many cool activities going on around here. Just love it. The other side of campus. Frats and stuff, sororities. Spanish architecture. Bike's been exceedingly quiet. Not uh, a lot of fender rattle. This might be the back of the church. inspiring. So that's the idea, it inspires greatness, academically speaking. And, um, you know, I feel like we have the, the resources in our world to, to do this in more places, have respect, you know, people from all different cultures, men and women, all different just orientations go here and it's just wonderful. Well guys, ran out of batteries on the main camera. Hope you've had a fun time finishing off in beautiful Stanford University. Specialized has been an awesome host. It's been cool to check out their Vado. I hope you've enjoyed the ride and I'll see you on the full reviews and back at the site. As always, ride safe. <laughs>